Okay, good morning, everybody. So please come and sit on your blanket or pillow. Have your yoga blocks in your strap if you have that. And remember, please, if you don't have that, to try to get that, because that will be helpful to us as we move forward through the form. Rest your hands on your lap. Take your shoulders down and back. Close your eyes. Remain with your eyes closed. And become mindful of your breathing. So always we begin with the breath so that we bring ourselves into the present moment. Slow down your breath in. And slow down your breath out. Allow the inhale to fill you completely. And the exhale to empty you completely. Take a long, slow, deep breath in. And hold the breath. Take a little bit more breath and hold. Okay. Now they could hear you. She stopped. Exhale. Again, breathing in. Holding the breath. Take a little bit more and hold. Exhale. And one more time. Inhale. Holding the breath. Taking a little bit more and hold. Exhale. Reverse the course of your legs. Interlace your fingers. And as you inhale, flip the arms straight up over your head. <clears throat> as you exhale, pull the arms back and bring your chin into your chest. As you inhale, let the head lift. You're gazing up at the hands. As you exhale, round into your back, tuck your chin. Inhale, letting the arms lift. And as you exhale, sweep the arms behind you. Interlace your fingers, so if you when you interlace your fingers, if your shoulders are tight, use a strap instead of interlacing your fingers. And as you exhale, to the best of your ability, fold forward, lifting the arms high or down. Lead with your chin to come up. Release, reverse the cross of your legs, and also reverse the cross of your hands once again. As you inhale, flip the arms straight up over your head. As you exhale, pull the arms back and bring your chin to your chest. Inhaling, let the head lift, gaze at the hands. As you exhale, ground into your back, tuck your chin. As you inhale, let the arms lift. And once again, as you exhale, arms behind you, bring them to that shoulder blade squeeze. And as you exhale, to the best of your ability, fold forward. Lead with your chin to come up. And release, extend your legs straight out in front of you and walk back on your buttocks a little bit. Bend your right leg, so you want your left leg to be in a straight line. 
Take the right leg, cross it over your lap. Grasp your shin and elongate your torso. So I want you to feel that length through your spinal column. Left arm, it hugs into the leg. Take the right hand really close to your body, inhale. And as you breathe out, twist. You're looking over your right shoulder. Double twist, only your head turns to the left. And full twist, returning your head to the right. Hold here and breathe. Continue hugging that leg into your body. Release to center and we're changing sides. So your right leg is straight. Bend your left leg and cross your left leg over. The right arm, it wraps around your leg. Your left hand, it goes behind you. Fairly close to your body though. Make sure you're not sinking into that back hand. Take your breath in. As you exhale, pulling against that knee, twisting to look over your left shoulder. Double twist, only your head turns to the right. And full twist, turning your head to the left once again. Hold here and breathe. and release. Relax your legs completely. And again, walk back on those buttocks just a little bit. Bend your knees, hook behind them. Bring the soles of your feet together. Draw your heels in close. Your hands, they're wrapped around your feet. Your spine is lifted ever so lightly. Flutter the legs. Taking your hands to your thighs, Lean forward again, just slightly as you press down. And release. And again, pressing down. And release, and then one more time, pressing down. And release, bring your feet forward. So you want to create this diamond shape with your legs. Have your blocks handy. Take a breath here. When you fold forward as you exhale, so here is your intention to bring your head to rest on your feet. So put your blocks on your feet. If you don't have blocks, whatever else you might have, maybe a pillow, so that your head has support. As you hold here. And think of breathing into your back. Think of breathing into the whole back of your body. Round yourself to center. Take both legs straight out in front of you. Take your strap. Wrap your strap around both feet. Wind your hands around the strap and then also, see how I'm keeping my elbows right up against my body? So your elbows are against your body and your shoulders are down. This is called Dandasana or staff pose. You're pulling on the strap, not just to get the stretch in your legs, but also, and more importantly, to get the length in your spinal column. The shoulders are dropped down away from the ears. The spine is long and lifted. You're pressing your heels away from you, pulling on the strap so you get that stretch in the whole back of your leg. We're just holding here for a couple of breaths. Dandasana or staff pose. Keep that lift in your spinal column. Extend the arms forward. Now we're not going to the floor. We're going straight forward towards the camera. Take a breath in. And as you exhale, a little bend in your knee. Reach for me. Inhale, center. Once again, exhale, ground those heels and reach for and then one more time, inhale. And as you exhale, grounding your heels, reaching forward, a little bend in your knee. As you inhale, take the arms straight up over the head. And as you exhale, release down. We're coming to our hands and knees. And if you want to have a blanket or pillow under your knees for cushioning, then take a moment to do that. 
your hands are under your shoulders, your knees are under your hips for cat-cow pose. As you inhale, arch your back and look up. As you exhale, press into your palms, round your back and tuck your chin to your chest. Inhaling, arch, looking up. And as you exhale, round, pull in your abdomen, tuck in your chest, two more. Cat cow pose, inhale, arch. And as you exhale, round. One more. Inhaling, arch. And as you exhale, round. Now pull the rounding. Send your breath into the back of your body. Relax your head and neck completely. Find your breath. Extended cat cow. As you inhale, raise the right leg high behind you, looking up. Exhaling, bring your right knee towards your forehead, forehead towards the knee. Inhale, extend, looking up. And as you exhale, round. One more. Inhaling, extend. And as you exhale, round the changing side, left side. Inhale, <coughs> extend. And as you exhale, round. Again, inhaling, extend. And as you exhale, round. One more. Inhaling, extend. And as you exhale, round. Now come again to all fours. Take the right leg out behind you. Ball of the foot on the floor firmly and pump into your heel, just so that you feel a stretch through <laughs> the back of your leg. Keep pressing. Center the left hand a little bit. Pivot yourself around the kneeling triangle so you'll notice that this foot is flat on the floor. Take your palms to your hips, press your hips forward. Raise the top arm. Remember, if you have an issue with your shoulder, hand to the shoulder instead. Bring that arm over your head. I'm going to come around and look. You should feel that stretch. Oops, oh, sorry, Bean. You should feel that stretch through the side of your body. Hold here and breathe. That's it. Good. So if you can bring the arm over your head, bring the arm over your head. Pine tree, it's the other way. Your left hand should be down, pine tree, and your right arm up. And then you're swinging, pine tree, swing your left leg out to the left so that it gives you an anchoring. No, that's your right leg, left leg. Left leg out to the left. To the left. <laughs> uh, okay, let me go over this. <laughs> okay, come down. Everybody sit down for a moment and watch me because uh, definitely some of you were confused in terms of your leg. This is a kneeling triangle pose, right? So I'm gonna do it from this side. The leg that's bent, that's the leg that swings over. Think of it like a kickstand. So when you're in this posture, whatever leg is back like this, that's the hands that's down. The leg that's straight, that's the arm that's over the head. So when I looked around, some of you were doing it exactly the opposite, which you were probably trying to figure out what the heck is that, because it didn't really feel like a pose. So I want to do the same side again. All fours, right leg back, center your left hand, take your left leg, swing it all the way over to the left, turn your right foot flat. So my left leg is down, my left hand is down. My right leg is straight, my right arm is up. Bring that arm all over your head. Let me take another look. And now you have it, I think. Let me check everybody out. Now you have it, pine tree. So if you can bring that arm over your head, bring it over. If not, don't worry about it. I want everybody to be breathing though, so make sure to breathe. Can you go a little further? Can anybody raise the right leg off the floor? 
So you add some balance to the pose. Okay, release. And let's change sides. Take that left leg back and push the heel back. I want you to first feel the stretch of the back of the leg. Think of pumping the heel a little bit. Right hand centers. Swing the right leg over to the right. Raise that left arm. Bring that arm over your head. And breathe into the whole left side of your body. Keep breathing into that side. Feel the left side of the body open. And release. Come back to all fours. And we're taking a cat cow vinyasa flow. I love this sequence because it moves the whole spinal column for sure. I'm going to do it twice with you, and then I'm going to talk you through, and we're going to do it four times all together. So the, the last two times you'll be on your own. So really pay attention to the sequencing as we as I do it with you for the first two rounds. Come to look at done it before though. Come to your hands and knees. Hands under your shoulders, knees under your hips, starting in cat cow. Inhale, arch. And as you exhale, round. Inhaling, arch. As you exhale, sit all the way back in extended child pose. Inhale to swinging cobra. Thighs touch the floor. Curl your toes under and exhale to down dog pose. Inhale to upward dog pose. And exhale to down dog pose. Come to your knees. We adjust your hands. We'll take that same flow again. Inhale, arch, and look up. Exhale, push away from your palms, round your back, tuck your chin. Inhale, arch. And as you exhale, sitting all the way back in extended child pose. Inhale to swinging cobra, keep your thighs down on the mat. And exhale to downward dog pose. Inhale, up dog pose, thighs are off the floor, but you can bring the knees to the floor if you need to. And exhale to down dog pose. So twice more, start on your knees. <laughs> Inhale, arch. And as you exhale, round. So you're not in down dog, knees are on the floor. Inhale, arch. Exhale, sit back in your extended child pose to the best of your ability. Inhale, swing yourself forward, swinging cobra. Let your thighs touch the floor, roll the shoulders back. Exhale, lift up to down dog pose, upside down V. Inhale, up dog pose, roll the hips forward. Good, Danielle, good, Gigi. Exhale, down dog pose. So let's do one more flow like that. To your knees, readjust. Inhale, arch and look up. Exhale, round into cat pose. Inhale, arch. As you exhale, sit back in extended child pose. Inhale to swinging cobra. Hips touch the floor. Exhale to down dog pose. Inhale to up dog pose. And exhale to down dog pose. Now I want you to hold your downward dog pose. So it's an upside down V. Pine tree, go into up or uh, downward dog pose. Press your chest towards your thighs. Think of lifting out of those arms. Take three breaths more. 
at the end of your third breath, come to your knees, separate your feet, uh, not your feet, separate your knees. So you're sitting all the way back. If you can't sit back, put a pillow between your buttocks and your heels and come to an extended child pose. Just for a moment. Come up to center, lie down on your back. If you want to put a blanket under your head, you can, or thin pillow under your head. Have a strap. And you're lying down. Bring your right knee to your chest. Holding on to that knee, circle from your hip, and then circle in the opposite direction. As you inhale, press your knee away from you. And as you exhale, bring your knee in towards you. Again, inhale away from you. And exhale towards you. And then one more. Inhale away. As you exhale, hug that knee in close. Hold here and breathe. Take a breath in. And as you exhale, lift your forehead towards your knees. But if you feel a strain in your neck, keep your head down. Reach for your elbows. Watch that you don't tilt over to one side. Lower your head and now take your right foot. Place your right foot flat on the floor. Flex your left foot and as you inhale, lift the left leg. With your left leg lifted, rest your hands on your abdomen so that you're conscious of your breath moving beneath your palms and circle the left ankle slowly. And now circle in the opposite direction. Point, flex, point, flex, point, and flex. Keep your foot flexed. Take the left arm, stretch that arm over your head, grasp your left wrist with your right hand and give a little pull. So I want you to imagine that I'm pulling on your ankle as you're pulling on your wrist. Take an in-breath. And as you exhale, float the left leg down. Feeling the length through the whole left side of your body. Keep that length. Draw the right knee to your chest without holding on to that leg. For the moment and then take the right hand bring it to the right knee take the left hand and rest it on your left hip so watch as we do this together you're taking the right leg and rolling the right leg out to the right and then bringing the leg to center hold the right leg with the left hand so it's not a full crossover pose I actually just want you to pull the leg over a little bit so you're getting some stretch through the right side body. Release to center and release. So we'll do that whole sequence now to the other side. Take your left knee to your chest, hold on to that leg and circle the hip, go slow. And then circle in the opposite direction. As you inhale, press the knee away from you. Exhale, bring that knee in towards you. Inhale, away. And as you exhale, bring the knee in towards you. And then one more. Inhale, away. Exhale, the knee comes towards you. Reach for your elbows around your leg and hug your knee towards your chest, forehead towards the knee. No strain in the neck though. Lowering the head, place your left foot on the floor and raise the right leg straight up. Now rest your hands again on your abdomen. 
so that you can feel the movement of your breath beneath your hands. Circle the right ankle, slow. And then circle in the opposite direction. Point, flex. Point, and flex. Float the right arm over your head. Grasp your wrist, give a little pull. Press through the right heel. And you're floating that right leg down. The whole right side of the body is getting a little bit longer. And then bring the left knee to your chest. Your right hand rolls on the right hip. Roll the left leg a little bit over to the left. And then look across the midline of the body a little bit, not too much. So your left buttock should lift, but ever so slightly. Release, and now take both knees into your chest. Cup your hands over the knees and from your hips. So you're making these deep, deep circles into the hip socket. Notice that I'm going quite slowly here, right? So you don't want to go fast. You want to feel that deep rotation in your hip socket. And then go in the opposite direction. Turn your hands towards each other. If you can interlace them, interlace them. So this is full knee to chest pose. Take it in breath. And as you exhale, hug the knees down into the body. Don't do anything else yet for the moment. Hug those knees in close. Feel that. Breathe here. Take another breath in. As you exhale, head towards your knees. Reach for your elbows if you can. Lower your head. And now place the soles of your feet <coughs> on the floor. So this is supta, which means reclining, baddha konasana. The soles of your feet are together. Bring your hands to rest on your belly. Close your eyes and feel the movement of your breath once again beneath your hands. So the rising of the breath as you breathe in. And the falling of the breath as you breathe out. Sorry about that. That's my belt. I'm going to just have you stay here. Hug those knees into your chest. Okay, sorry about that gang. Releasing, that's what happens when you teach at home, right? Somebody was at my door, my neighbor was at my door. I told him to come back at 10.30. Okay, hey, sorry. Now, come to the side. And let's do half um, side bow pose. Support your head, I don't care which side you're doing first. This is Beanie. I'm watching Beanie till tomorrow morning. Good boy. Okay, bend your top leg, hold your ankle, pressing your hip forward. Lift that leg up and back. So I want you to feel that, this is a back bend really. I want you to feel that back bend. The hip is going forward, the leg is going back. Hold here and breathe. Take that top knee, bring it to the chest. So here's where you might need your strap. Actually, I'm sure you will need your strap. Wrap your strap around your foot and lift the leg straight up to the ceiling. Pull that leg into your body. So I want you to notice that I'm not rolling back, right? I'm keeping myself to the side and I'm pulling that leg <clears throat> into my body. So I'm getting the stretch through the inner leg, the inner thigh, as well as the back of the leg. Continue holding a few more breaths here. 
release, and now let's change sides. So again, I like to do this posture with support from my head. Right? I find this is quite comfortable actually. Bend your top leg and hold the ankle. And one of the reasons I like this posture is because it brings us into that back bending mode, which is important that we have that resiliency to move backwards, but yet it's pretty accessible to everybody. The hip is pressing forward, that leg, it's lifting up and back. Hold here, breathe, keep that hip lifted as you hold, right? So your hip is going forward, your leg is going back. Releasing, take your strap around your foot and pull that leg in to your body. Hold here and breathe. Pulling that leg closely into your body as you hold. And release. Come and lie down on your abdomen. So when you lie down on your abdomen, so you notice now I'm, I'm lacing my fingers. I'm propped up on my forearms. Lift, lift each leg a little bit and slide that leg to the wall behind you. We're coming to Sphinx posture. We're gonna take a couple of back bends here. Again, back bends are really useful for us, especially as we get older, so that we don't get that rounding in the back and we keep the flexibility of the spinal column. So do this, take your hands, wrap your fingers around your elbows, and that should be the width of the elbows, and then, take your hands to the floor. So this is Sphinx pose. Press into your forearms. They're not actually moving, but the feeling you want to have is that you're sliding the rib cage forward as you hold. So hold here and breathe. As you inhale, press into your palms, let the elbows lift. And as you exhale, bring the elbows down. Again, inhale, lift. And exhale, down. And then one more, hold here. And as you hold, push away from the hands. So you're finding a little bit of that back bend. Let's hold a couple of breaths more. and release. Now take the left arm and force it in front of you like this. Bend your right leg. Reach back. Can you hold on to your foot? Hopefully. And then pull your heel in towards your body. You'll feel a stretch in the front of your thigh. That's the quadriceps muscle. So you're pulling your foot down. You should feel that stretch in your thigh as you hold. We'll hold a couple of more breaths. Do the best that you can. And then let's change sides. Bending that left leg, pulling your heel down. Holding here, breathe. Keep holding. and release. One hand comes on top of the other. Let's rest the forehead on the back of the hand. So you might need to lift your head up just to see what we're doing, but otherwise the forehead is to the back of your hands. Actually, you know what? Just watch me for one moment. So this is called half uh, locust pose. My forehead is here and as my, I breathe in, I'm raising the right leg. I want you to know this doesn't look very far. So I'm not swinging the hip off the floor. I'm just lifting that leg straight out behind me. You should feel your gluteal muscles, your the muscles of the buttocks contracting. Okay, so let's do that together. Rest your forehead on the back of your hands. Inhale, raise the right leg, it doesn't go far. Exhale, down. Inhale, left leg. 
exhale, down. Inhale, right. Exhale, down. Inhale, left. Exhale, down. This time we're holding. Inhale, right. Hold here, breathe. Release and change. Inhale, left. Hold and breathe. And release. Turn your head to one side. Rest for just a moment. So that's a preparation for a posture called Nalasana, or boat pose, which is a posture that strengthens the whole back of your body. If you have blocks, I'd like you to take your blocks, place them on the floor on either side of you, and rest your palms on the blocks. So take a moment to set yourself up. Push down into your blocks, and if you don't have blocks, just push your palms down into the floor. And as you inhale, lift your head, shoulders, chest, both legs. Exhale, down. Again, inhale, lift. And exhale, down. So I wanna come around and watch for a moment. Stay where you are. Okay, bolt pose, a back strengthening posture. Inhale, lift. Good, that's it, Danielle. You can keep your head centered though. There you go. Now, can you raise your arms off the blocks and lift the arm? Ah, that's it, a little bit higher. Nice, Gigi. Good pine tree. Can't see everybody, but for those of you who I can see, hold here, breathe here. This is very good. And release. Turn your head to the side, make a pillow with your arms under your cheek and rest. So that's now asana, it's called boat pose. A great back bending posture. And then roll onto your back. Roll onto your back. So we're coming to Sektu Bandhasana or bridge Pose. Nothing under your head for this posture, and you want your feet to be aligned to your hips. You know what? Let's get our blocks. So have your blocks handy. Arms are by your sides. You're pressing your palms into the floor, and as you inhale, lift your buttocks, hips, Middle back, upper back. As you exhale, float down slow. Again, inhaling, buttocks, hips, middle back, upper back. And as you exhale, once again, float down slow. And then we'll do that one more time. Inhale to lift, hold here. Push down into your palms, press down into your feet. See if you can lift up just a little bit higher. And you'll feel the leg muscles working, the hips, the buttocks. And then roll down slow. Then have your blocks and your strap handy. Just watch me for a moment. So you're either going to take one block flat like this, or you're going to place one block on top of the other. If this is too high, you can take those. But, so if this is too high, but this is too low, you can take the blocks and you can flip them sideways. That's like the mid-height level. We're taking bridge pose, but we're gonna do it in a supported way. This is actually one of my favorite ways of doing this posture. So I'll talk you through. I'll do it with you so you can follow. As you inhale, lift your buttocks, 
hips, middle back, upper back. Now take one block, place it underneath you, and lower your buttocks onto the block. So your sacrum, that's that flat bone at the base of the spine, it should be resting on that block. If that feels really easy to you, come up onto your toes, lift your buttocks again, slip the second block on top of the first block, and settle there into that pose. If this feels too high to you, but one block feels too low to you, take both of your blocks and flip them sideways. And that's kind of the mid-height level. And before we go any further, for those of you who I can see, let me come and check. Oh boy. Well, I can't see everybody, but if I can see you, I'll let you know. Now, you wanna make sure those blocks don't dig into your waist. So make sure they're comfortably placed, that you can settle there, should feel comfortable. Your shoulders and your shoulder blades are on the floor. Okay, so you're here in your supported ridge. <coughs> Excuse me. Raise the right leg straight up to the ceiling. Flex your foot. And now slowly, so look where my hands are. My hands are on my abdomen and on my hip. I want to feel that extension. Stretch the right leg out. Remember how we did this in the very beginning, lying flat? <laughs> Excuse me. Stretch that right leg out. Let your right heel rest on the floor. And you should feel a wonderful lengthening through the whole right side of your body. Hold here and breathe. If you want to take the right arm over your head, <laughs> take that right arm over your head. That's going to give you a longer stretch through the whole right side. Float the right arm down, bring the right leg in. <laughs> and now extend the left leg. Again, flex your foot, extend through that hip, and float the left leg down. If it's too high, just lower the blocks. So I want you to feel that lengthening now through the left side of the body. Take the left arm over your head <coughs> so that you feel that length through the whole left side. And release. Take both legs in. And now take your stretch. Bring your strap around the right foot and then bring your left foot into the strap. So this is called Viparata Karani. It's an inversion. We used to do this posture when we were at the center. We used the bolsters for those of you who remember very often. We use the bolsters under the box. The legs are straight so you're not pulling your legs towards you. Your legs are actually a little bit away, pulling away from you, so they should be in a straight line. <clears throat> and now you're getting the benefit of inverting your blood circulation, your lymphatic fluid, of reversing the flow of gravity in the body, of softening into your abdominal breathing. In yoga, this posture is called Viparata Karani. It's called, means inverted lake. Because you're inverting, you're inverting the inner body. Right, so the bodily fluids, the blood, the lymphatic fluid is flowing into gravity. And you're just holding. This is one of those postures because it's an inversion, it's good to hold it a little bit longer than some of the other poses. So we're just holding a few breaths more. Bend your knees, 
place your feet on the floor. Relax your arms. Now, I want you to come up onto your toes. Listen carefully. If you're only using one block flat, just stay there. But if you are using two blocks, move one block out of the way, have the other block flat underneath your sacrum. Again, your sacrum is that flat bone at the base of your spine. So you should not feel the block digging into your waist. And then bring the soles of your feet together. Remember we did this posture in the very beginning of our practice, sitting down. The soles of your feet are together. The knees are winged out to the sides. This is a hip opener. And it's called Supta reclining, Baddha Konasana, bound angle pose. Rest your hands on your belly. Close your eyes. And simply feel the movement of your breath beneath your hands. The rising and falling of the breath beneath the palms. Keep the feet together. In fact, press them into each other. See if you can lift the buttocks enough to remove that second block. So now you're lying flat on the floor. Keep the soles of your feet touching for as long as you can. Sliding your legs forward till the knees are straight. And then roll your legs from side to side. Place your fingers underneath your head. Make sure your hands are under your head, not your neck. Bring your elbows close together near your face. Take an in breath. As you exhale, your arms, they are literally lifting your head off the floor. So you should be feeling that stretch in the back of your neck. Letting your arms do the work, the arms turning your head to the right. center and to the left. Center. Lower your head to the mat. Stretch your arms to the wall behind you. Flex your feet. If you have sensitivity in your lower back, you're rolling to your side to come up. Otherwise, come straight up to a seated posture. Come to the front of your mat. We're taking dynamic plow. As always, you're doing whatever you can do to the best of your ability. If you're not sure what this is, watch first and then join in. We're rolling back and to center five times. So on your own, rolling back and center. Back and center. Three more times. When you are done, come to center, rest for just a moment, and then I'd like you to do that again on your own. So you're at the front of your mat. I'm going to come around and watch. Okay, five times, go ahead. Rolling back, that's it, Devorah. Make sure your head touches the floor. In order for you to get up, you have to let your head touch the floor, otherwise you kind of become like a beached whale and you get stuck. End of that fifth breath, come back, good. Come back up to center. And then we're ready for relaxation, actually. So prepare yourself now for our relaxation. Lie down on your back. And you can have a blanket under your head if you'd like. Allow your arms to roll away from your body. Let your legs and feet be comfortably apart. Close your eyes.
with your eyes closed, become fully aware of your breath. the whole front of your body releasing to your back and the back of your body releasing to the ground. You're using the power of your mind to suggest, to feel your whole body rest. Feel your arms, your hands, and both of your shoulders relax. Feel your legs your feet and both of your hips relax. Release your spine and the muscles in your back and feel the front of your body relax. Relax your neck and throat. Relax your head. Relax your eyes, cheeks, lips, tongue, and jaw. Going more deeply, relax your heart and breath. Feeling as you breathe with every single breath, every cell in your body totally, completely relaxed. Your whole being rests. So be mindful here of your breath and just follow the movement of that breath in and out. the rising and falling of the breath. Think of your breath like a wave that flows through your body. The in-breath flowing through, the out-breath flowing through. With every breath you take, you move into a deeper state of letting go and total relaxation. Just in these few moments, before you continue with your day. Being here still with the breath. Begin to move your fingers, to move your toes, to move your head from side to side. 
as you feel ready, give yourself a deep, full stretch in any way that feels good to you. Then come to center, legs crossed, eyes closed. Take a breath for your body. A breath for your mind. A breath for your soul. Take one more deep breath in. And as you exhale, open your eyes. Thank you very much, everyone.